topic for today's video is using BitFocus Companion to configure and control the upstream key next transition on a Blackmagic ATEM switcher. So what am I talking about? If you take a look at the Blackmagic software control, uh, the ATEM software control program, this is an area that I was confused by for a long time when I started using Blackmagic switchers, but I think I understand it now. There, the way that you control whether a key or an upstream keyer is on air during the next transition is based on these little uh, toggles right here. And what it'll do is it'll change the state to the opposite of whatever's happening in the next transition. So for example, if I were to set, uh, for example, oh, let's say bars on my preview and I were to transition, because this is not set, what's gonna happen is it's gonna keep the upstream key on during that next transition. But now if I wanted to change that, so let's say I wanted the key to go off during the next transition because it's currently on, I would click this and I would say auto and you would see that it's now off. And because this is still highlighted, when I hit the transition again, it'll now transition to have the key on. So that's what that does. So if we, let's say that we go back to our view, we've, oh, we've actually, we toggled the key, let's turn the key on. Um, and then let's say that we wanna have it off, we would go like that. And then let's say if we wanted to stay off, we would say like that. And then if we wanted to turn on, we would say like that. Okay, so that's how it works. So the problem with that is if you're using something like BitFocus Companion to control your shot box and change the, the scenes that you're displaying on your production switcher, you, you know, depend, you may not, you may have a situation where you don't know what the current state of the key is. So you don't know if it's on or off. And what you want is to define the outcome. So you want to say, look, in this shot, when I hit this button on my stream deck, I want the key to be on during the transition, or I want the key to be off during the transition. But because the way that the next transition works in the ATEM software, it would depend on whether you have um, whether you have the key on or off, whether you want to set that next transition button on or off, if that makes sense. Um, so for a long time, I really couldn't figure out a way to do that. But I have the solution for you now, and uh, that's what we're going to cover in this video today. The trick to making this work is to use the trigger capability within the BitFocus Companion software. So if you look at the screen, I have um, a test installation of Companion. My real Companion is much more complicated than this with many more connections, but I'm trying to keep it simple for the video. So I just did a fresh install on this computer. Uh, so this is not my production Companion instance. But anyway, so I only have the one connection right now to the ATEM software. We want to create a button in Companion that is going to set US key one next transition on. And the action is going to set key one to on air for step one. We're going to take the progress, the manual progress, uh, progress, I guess that's how you'd say it, uh, button. We're going to, we're going to turn that off. We're going to add a step and we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to change it to off for step two. Uh, oh, and this needs to be key one. So these labels are a little bit misnomers in that it would be nice if this did well, exactly what it said, which is change the selection component to be on air for the next transition. But that's not actually what this does. It's really just about whether it clicks it or it doesn't click it in that UI. And so, for example, if the key is on air currently and you set this state to on air for the next transition, um, that box will be selected, that UI element will be selected. But what it'll really do is turn the key off. So if so, so the point of this button is to say we want it to be on. So if the key is currently on, then we would want this button on step two so that this would uncheck that button, which would mean that the key would remain on for the next transition. Whereas if the key was currently off, then we would want it on step one, which would turn it on for the next transition. So, so how do we know whether the key is on or off and how do we automatically set this to be on the correct step? Well, the way that we do that is with a trigger. So we'll create a new trigger and we'll call it US key one, key on. So when the upstream key one is on, 
And so the way that we would do, well, the way we would find that is we would say on condition becoming true, um, and the condition is the upstream key on air state. And so when this, so this, what this will do is it'll say when this key one is on air, the action is going to be to set the current step of the button on page 99, button one. And so what we said is if it's currently on, then we actually want to be on step two, right? Because if you remember over here, step two turns that next transition button, the one from here, it'll turn this off, which if the key is on and this is off, if you recall, when we have this turned off and we do a transition, the key remains on. So that's actually what we want. Now we need to create another tr uh, trigger here, which is very similar, but it's gonna be for key off. And so this is going to that same button, but we wanna set it to step one. And then what we have to do is we actually say on condition becoming false. So this is, uh, we wanna negate the when, the when this condition here, this on air state is no longer true. So when the key is off air, then it'll set it to step one. And really what you wanna do is you wanna have two of these, right? So you wanna have one here, one here, and then you wanna say next transition off because you wanna obviously be able to also say, look, next time it runs, I want it to be off. I think in that case, what you would do is you would actually say the opposite. If I'm, if, I, if my logic is correct here, we'll see if, see if I screw this up, but I think it would just be the exact opposite. Um, oh, I screwed myself up because I'm, I'm modifying what I have. I just did. What I really want to do is say button two. So button two should be set to two. And then in this case, button two will be set to one. So basically the opposite, because this button is meant to do the opposite of the other button, right? So let's turn these triggers on. Great. Now let's go back to the, um, let's go back to the um, buttons page. And when you look here, you'll see, okay, we're on step one what should start to happen now let's see if i can show both of these at the same time let's let's do it like this so now you'll see step one step two if i turn the on air and then i turn it back on right so we were in a weird state initially but now that i've toggled it you'll see this is now on step two i toggle it again it's on step one we should see the same thing happen for button two where it'll change so button two is on step two let's say it's on step one and now what happens is, let's say, okay, so here's the one that says next transition on. So because this is already set, uh, this should really do nothing. So let's run test and you'll see nothing changed there. Let's say that I wanna have the next transition be off. So we would need this to be highlighted. And so if we say test, now it is. And if we come back over here, it should turn it off. Uh, so that is great. N now, you're not gonna go onto page 99 of your deck and do this. What you wanna do instead is, uh, not have this, what you wanna do instead is use, it, let's say you have a scene and you wanna have the key off, for example. <clears throat> so let's say you were gonna set preview input to, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, color, color bars, right? And let's say that you wanted to not have, um, you wanted to not have the key running when that happened. So you would say in your controller here, you would say on page 99, press button two. So that's next transition off. And so now, uh, and then let's say that we add a, okay, auto transition, there it is. So now in theory, when we press this button, it should set the preview to color bars, which is what it, I think is already set to, uh, and then run, uh, run this button, which will disable the next transition, which will actually turn this on momentarily and then run the transition. So let's try it. And what we should see is uh, it'll transition to color bars without uh, an upstream key on. One trick that you have to do though, is I've found that you need to give this time to run. So I put a slight delay between the trigger uh, button press and the transition, because if you don't, sometimes it doesn't catch it. So if we run this now, what you'll find is it's running and, and the, and the um, upstream key is off. 
we go back to button one, this will turn it on, right? So this is saying do color bars, but have the key on. If we run it, you'll see, look at that. Now it's, it's on air. And uh, because we've still got it set to button one, uh, what needs to happen now is this needs to actually get turned off. And so if we press test, oops, I hit it twice, I think. But anyway, if you hit test, you'll see it turned it off. And we turn it on again. We run it again. And it's not it's not changing it. So that's that's what we want. Uh, and then again, we take we say, okay, we don't want that. So we go back to button two. And you see, there you go. It did turn it on and then turn the key off. So that is um, what's great then too, is if we go in here, let's say, and we turn the key on air and we've got this key on and we want it off, it'll know now that button will be on the right step. And so it doesn't matter if other things have gone in and changed the state of the key uh, because the trigger is watching all the time for the state of that key. And so when we hit test again, you'll see it turn the key off. So that is the way that you do it. And then we run it again and you'll see that yellow button will get turned off because it's going to stay off. So it's you're defining the outcome that you want. So again, uh, just as a reminder, you've got these triggers for key on and key off. And then you and then you have these buttons over here on page 99 that you never use directly, but you call them from other buttons and that lets you set the state of the transition. And of course, you can do this for any of the keys that you're working with. That's the video that we have for you today. Um, I hope it's useful. I hope it's helpful. It took me a, a while to figure out how to get this to work. And I know it's a little confusing sometimes to think through the logic in your head of, of you know, what condition should be set to what based on what state but once you get it working it's pretty much you know you set it up and you forget it um we did this for one of the upstream keys but of course you can do it for however many upstream keyers you have i in my production companion setup have different buttons on page 99 for each of the upstream keyers in my switcher um, so anyway hope this is helpful and i uh, hope you've enjoyed thanks so much bye bye